guys, it's Morgan coming to you with a tech video. Uh, we're going to be adjusting the valves on this KX250. It's a 2021 KX250. It's got about 40 hours on it and it needs a valve adjustment. Um, I know that because the gentleman who owns it took it apart and um, he checked the valves and I know that they're tight. So we've already moved past that <laughs> um, part of the deal. But uh, yeah, so. Um, let's get started. We've obviously got the seat tank and all that stuff off. That's all pretty simple. Now we're gonna take the valve cover off and we're gonna dive in. All right, guys. One thing that I've always liked about valve adjustments on Kawasaki's is that there's no frame coming across here like a Yamaha, and there's a lot more room than on a Honda to get everything out of the way. So hats off to Kawasaki. Thank you guys so much for making this a little bit easier on the mechanics so just so you guys know I already know that these valves are tight because the gentleman who brought me this bike already checked them so we know that they're tight but I'll show you how we check them and then I'll go about showing you how we actually uh, adjust them too so Way. Got our intakes here, exhaust here. What we want to do is rotate this motor so that we're off of uh, that right now where it looks like we're at top dead center overlap because the cam lobes are pointing down. So I'm going to rotate that engine. Yeah. Now we're coming up on top dead center compression like that. Fuel gauges are going to come in here, try to get underneath. This intake cam can't get a three thousandths under that one. Can't get a three thousandths under that one. So they are tight. Go ahead and check our exhaust while we're here. They should be probably somewhere between six and eight. Six goes on that one. Six goes on that one. So we're good. So we know that both these intakes are tight. Um, I'll talk about why I think that is the case here in a little bit. So now what we gotta do is we gotta take tension off of this. All right guys, while we're here and uh, we can look at everything, I suggest you guys do this. So if you don't have a manual or you don't wanna look it up on YouTube <laughs> like this, uh, and you're getting ready to check valves, you need to take things apart, you need to see what top dead center looks like, I suggest you do it before you take everything all the way apart. So. Um, Right now, I haven't touched anything with the timing or any of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate. So I don't know, let's see. You can see right down in there, there's a dot there. And then there's a dot over here on this one. We want those in line with the head. And then we're gonna double check. That should be top dead center. You look in here and I know it's really hard to see probably on this camera, probably impossible to see on this camera, but there's a mark on the flywheel that lines up with this little tick mark in here. So now we know we're good. So you can look at this thing, make sure, okay, that's what that looks like. All right, you take a picture if you need to. Now we know we're good. So now we're gonna take the tension off of the cam chain so we can get the cap off. So by doing that, that doesn't take the tension off. There's a cam down in here. There's like a, well, there's a, a shaft that's got, anyway, whatever. It can't come loose. I mean, that's how that, that's the nice thing about this style of thing. So we still have to take the whole tensioner out. All right. So here, guys, let me show you something. So here's the mechanism that keeps this from moving backwards. So you can see there's grooves on this shaft here. See that, there you go. And then this cam is held by this little spring. So when you push back, it allows this to go in. But as it comes out, it you hear that click? I mean, that was kind of fast. Let me see if I can do it slower. Like that. So now I can't come back. That's why I like this style cam chain tensioner better than the hydraulically operated ones on KTMs. Uh, and the Dirt Tricks cam chain tensioner is basically 
this system, but inside of the original uh, OEM looking thing, but it's the same thing. A little uh, cam and little grooves on the shaft. So, All right, so now we're loose up here. So you can see that, good deal. Now I gotta take these cam cap off. Uh, and then I'm gonna show you a little trick. What we're gonna do guys is we're gonna take a zip tie. And we're gonna come through here. And we're gonna zip tie the cam chain to the cam because we're not gonna have to take this cam all the way out and on the bench I don't think so if we zip tight like that now we can't skip time um, so let's drop this thing down and pull that cap off all right guys when you're taking these caps off just want to go slow and be careful because there are keepers under here that you really don't want to have fall down into the motor it's not the end of the world if they do because you can stop and take it apart and get them out but <laughs> it's a ton more work so see there's one trying to fall right there and get in there and get a hold of it these are the keepers right here guys you don't want to lose those a lot of times i've had them fall down in there and been able to get them out with a magnet but you really don't want to have to do that now since this is zip tied we can just lift this up and move it like that and it's not going to come out of time and we can make sure we keep on this cam back here so we don't lose that now well, that's out of the way move these followers and we'll get our magnet and that right there is the other thing you want to be careful about that thing fell out of that cam cap too so just might got to really keep an eye on everything make sure you don't lose anything because um, I've seen people misplace that and not know they misplaced it <laughs> and end up in the motor and it's bad so all right so we got that one out there's our valve shim thing on these from the factory and also if they've been in there for a little while it's really hard to see how big they are it says 9.8 on it so I'm guessing it's a 2.98 Actually, I'm gonna go down to a 280. Um, I'm basically guessing at this point because those valves were all the way tight. I didn't have a smaller than 3,000th uh, feeler gauge. So I have to just guess because I don't know what the clearance was or if there is was any. There probably wasn't any. Uh, that's why this bike wasn't running right and not starting well. So, um, so we're just gonna put a 280 and we're gonna have to check it. And then we may have to do some math and redo it again. So we're gonna put a 280 in the right side all right, the other side was a 293, so we're going to go with a 275 uh, in that. All right, now cam cap goes back on. I'm not putting the keepers in because I just want to check the clearance. Yeah. Yo! Uh, Jared, Slate. Trade. Driver. <laughs> um, All right, Alright guys, so I didn't put the keepers back in because like I said, I don't, uh, I don't know, there we go, sorry, I don't know if that's going to be uh, correct, so um, if those shims are going to be right, so we're just going to put them in to check. So what I do for checking, especially on these intakes, I'm going to put one bolt here and one bolt over here, tighten those down, uh, just snug them up, we don't have to go get the torque wrench out yet, um, but we want to snug them up, get them tight and then um, check because if we just push on it you're not really getting it as tight as you really should so all right so now we are looking for between four and six so let's get a five thousandths all right actually starting with a three three goes Four is good on that one. Can't get four on the left. 
All right, and actually I got the six now. Six just drags on the right. So we got the right one's good. So now we need to go back to this left one and um, go smaller on that. And that's weird, honestly, that because I went down the same number on both. Just weird that that uh, left one is that tight. Um, this gentleman, like I said before, I was going to tell you, uh, this is a kid's bike, uh, and his dad, you know, helps him with everything, all the maintenance and all that. Like, um, but he said he did notice one time that he didn't think the kid got his air filter on all the way, and um, that may have done it. <laughs> so uh, we'll get it adjusted. He's going racing this weekend over at Thunder Valley. Uh, racing some motocross so we'll get it to where he can race um but he might be looking at a top end here pretty soon or at least valves um well they might as well do a piston then too anyway so all right i'm gonna go through the same process here i'm gonna turn the camera off um and we'll get that one dialed in and then we'll see if this thing starts up all right guys it's time to tighten up the cam caps um obviously torque wrench highly important for this situation the other thing that's pretty important is it's pretty hard to see again on this camera but right here there's a one and then there's a two and three if you need it down to eight so that is the order you're supposed to tighten it in so it's nice it gives you numbers to follow it's really simple otherwise you just do kind of a crisscross pattern and make sure you don't tighten one side more than the other but um it is nice that they put that on there uh, so now we're going to set these to seven foot pounds that's all you do otherwise you will ruin the head of a motorcycle so if you don't have a torque wrench get one if you're going to do this job um i really do like the nice digital ones um just because you get better feel with them you can be more precise uh the clicky ones are fine but just make sure you get one that's uh, rated for the right kind of uh, uh range of torque and seven foot pounds is not a lot Now it's time to check the timing. Uh, like I said, since we used the zip tie and we were kind of careful, it shouldn't be a problem, but uh, always want to check again. So we're gonna look in here. There's a mark on the flywheel. It's lined up with those two tick marks. Look, I take my finger usually, push in here like that to act like the cam chain tensioner is on it. Cause you see it moves the cams when I push that. So now we look over here, there's a dot there, dot there. We're all good to go now. I can cut that zip tie off, put the cam chain tensioner back on, put the cap, valve cap on, put everything back together, and we'll hit the button and see if she starts. There we go. KX is ready to rock and roll. He is most likely going to need uh, valves because that one was way, way tight. Ended up having to go like six or seven sizes down, but uh, runs good for now. The uh, front end's tweaked too, so I'm gonna have to give his dad a call, let him know, see if he wants us to take care of that or um, they can. It's just got the rubber mounted uh, bar mounts and they're just a little bit. So anyway, on to the next job.